He's yet to play it down in the NFL, but yesterday, University of Missouri defensive end Michael Sam, he made NFL history when he announced he is gay. We have got a lot to go to on Sam and the state of the NFL, but first, meet the man himself here with ESPN's Chris Connolly. I came to tell the world that I'm an openly proud gay man. They are historic words from Michael Sam as this 24-year-old All-American football player from the University of Missouri shares his personal story with the world. Why is now the right time for you to be telling the world this news? Because, Chris, I want to own my truth. No one else should tell my story but me. A defensive standout who led the SEC in quarterback sacks last season, he will enter the NFL draft this May. You could become the first openly gay player in the history of the NFL. That's a momentous thing. What is your message for the teams that might draft you? That they see not just a gay athlete, but they can see an athlete who knows how to play the game. Growing up in the small town of Hitchcock, Texas, he told me he knew great adversity. Seeing my older brother killed from a gunshot wound, not knowing that my older sister died when she was a baby, telling the world I'm gay is nothing compared to that. He came out to his teammates and coaches at Mizzou last August and was gratified by their response. They supported me from day one. Have you thought about what this announcement will mean to players right now in grade school or high school or college who have been afraid to make the kind of statement that you're making today? They shouldn't be afraid of who they are. You call me a pioneer, uh, that's all good and great, but you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a football player. I'm Michael Sam, I'm a college graduate, I'm African American, and I'm gay. Reaction for the most part has been positive. Sam even getting congratulatory tweets from the First Lady and the Vice President, but there could be some difficult times ahead for Sam. Football analyst and former Jets coach Herm Edwards says he thinks Sam's stock will drop with some NFL teams, noting that teams may treat him coming out like any other off-the-field issue. Quote, he's bringing baggage into your locker room, Edwards said. Can the players handle the media attention they're going to have to get when they get questions asked, are you okay with a gay teammate? Now, for some players, the answer to that question is no. Former Jet Jonathan Vilma, who's currently with the Saints, says he doesn't want gay players in his locker room, saying, imagine if he's the guy next to me, and you know, I get dressed naked, taking a shower the whole nine, and it just so happens he looks at me. How am I supposed to respond? And last year, Vilma tweeted, grown men should not have female tendencies, period. You may remember at last year's Super Bowl, 49ers cornerback uh, Chris Culliver made some controversy when he said in an interview, I don't do gay guys. I don't do that. We don't have any gay guys on the team. They got to get up out of here. If they do, can't be with that sweet stuff. So how would Michael Sam fit into a locker room in obviously an evolving culture on this issue for that and more? We're very pleased to be joined by long slapper and co-captain of the New York football giant, Zach Diossi. He's kind enough to join us on the phone. Zach, thank you for a few minutes. Um, you know, I saw one of the uh, co-owners of the Giants uh, came out in support of Michael Sam. Um, how do you think he'd be welcomed into your locker room? I think he'd be received well, Richard. And, um, you know, some players around the league have had their opinions, and, you know, they're, 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 that's their right. But, um you know, I like to think of our, our locker room and, and mostly every locker room as a professional workplace. And, uh, you know, no matter what your sexual orientation is, uh, everyone should have the same sort of uh, privileges of working and being comfortable in, in their working environment. You're a captain. Uh, would you say, given this circumstance, let's say he was drafted uh, by the Giants, that you and the other captains would uh, get the team together or by units and have a conversation like you wouldn't have to, let's say, with another draftee on how to welcome them, um, how, you know, uh, training camp's going to go, how rookie hazing goes, would it be different with him than someone else? Would you feel the need to address your teammates before he ever stepped into your locker room? Well, that's, some, that's a bridge we'd, you know, that, that we'd have to cross when, when we get to it. But, um, you know, it's certain, so, certainly something to think about. Um, I wouldn't like to, I'd like to think that we wouldn't have to have those meetings with the team. I feel like we have, uh, we have a good group of guys and uh, – um, but if need be, uh, you know, people uh, might feel uncomfortable. We can certainly address it. But, you know, for it to escalate into a, an uncomfortable situation and persist, if he were to be on our team, I, I highly, highly doubt that will ever happen. You know, Zach, you've been around for a while. You're a veteran. Your father played in the league as well. Is this more of a generational issue? Uh, I, I'm sure if you have had a chance to, to talk to your father, how would have 
his generation welcomed him versus this generation? Well, I can't speak for my father and his generation, but uh, there is something to be said about the uh, generational uh, difference. Uh, this is the 21st century, and uh, a new age of athletes are coming out. And, um, you know, some people from uh, older uh, generations or the older uh, um, people, in the, you know, in, involved or fans or, or players might not feel comfortable with this, might not feel comfortable. But uh, the important thing is, uh, you know, it's all about respect, and, and sexual orientation uh, does not matter in this in this league, in any sport, in any locker room all over the world. And I think that's uh, a pretty well understood thought uh, in in today's sports, uh, uh, you know, countrywide. We obviously all watched, and you're much closer to it being part of the NFL fraternity, but the whole Richie Incognito, Jonathan Martin play out and the back and forth text, and we all know that uh, it's not church in NFL locker room. But what even might be just raw language here obviously carries different meanings when you're talking about an openly gay player, and obviously rookie hazing's tough for everybody. If this guy's treated that way, again, there could be different... It does, it does create a different circumstance, doesn't it, that people are going to have to think twice about what they say and what they do. Wouldn't you agree? Well, I mean, you know, there's, certain, there's something to be said about locker room traditions versus locker room hazing. Uh, I'm not condoning any sort of hazing, or, nor have we ever, uh, or have I ever been a part of that. But, um, you know, we do learn, work in a locker room. That's a fact. Uh, we are a bunch of alpha males, and... Uh, we uh, we like to have fun. It's a fun game. We play it. We love it. And uh, but but the underlying theme throughout uh, any sort of locker room traditions that we might keep up is respect. You know, uh, as the veterans respect the, the rookies, and the rookies respect the veterans, and, and it's the cycle that will always keep the bond of a, a locker room tight and strong. And and yeah, there might be some hiccups here and there, but uh, it. it it all comes down to respecting each other, and I, and I don't think this will, uh, you know, I, some players might have to be more aware of what they might say or, or do, and, and, and that's okay. That's all part of progress, and, and I'm excited to see this sort of change uh, come about, and, and I, I really do think we're there already, so uh, I'm excited to see what, what, what happens in the future and where he goes. Mm, I, you know, I've seen a, uh, Jerome Bettis I heard today said 90, 95% of the players would probably welcome him. Uh, to that end, you know, the one thing I've heard, Zach, is NFL players, regardless, of, they don't like distractions. They don't like to have to answer questions for another teammate or, or have to talk about a situation here that distracts from the mission, which is winning games. That all said, if you were in the draft room and they asked your opinion, if he could play, would you want him drafted on your team? In a heartbeat. I mean, I don't care where he's from, what's he, what he's about. Is he a good person? And can he help us win? Um, and then I asked that question in that order. Uh, you know, we're not me personally, and I can speak for most of my teammates as a captain and, and, and a player union rep. Uh, we just want to win, and we want to be put around with the best people uh, and and build camaraderie and and win football games, and and that's all that matters. Well, I sure hope a lot of uh, your uh, not only teammates but guys in the league feel the same way you do. Zach Diossi, I really appreciate a few minutes. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rich. Take care. All right, everyone, we're going to continue this conversation. We're going to bring on to our set a guest we had before. Um, he made national headlines here by coming out. He's a coach of a boys basketball team in high school here. His team welcomed him with open arms, but he can talk firsthand about some of the struggles Michael Sam must have been struggling with in deciding whether or not to take this bold step. We'll talk about that, acceptance, and other challenges straight ahead. <laughs> 